Yes, 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 all you Mini 3 Pro advocates can stop bombarding my little analysis of the Mini 3 Pro and pointing out that DJI just updated it to include a 10-bit color mode. When I made the video, it was 8-bit only, and I am in the same boat as everyone else who looked at the drone prior to that firmware update. Try and remember that we're talking about a consumer electronics device and not a close family member. And the valid criticism of such products is not a slight on your good name and virtue. And if the addition of this feature that you were probably never going to use anyway makes you feel better about your purchase, then I'm genuinely happy for you. huge advocate for DJI drones and have owned three of them, so I'm not sure why everyone got so defensive about the Mini 3. I'm just keen to strip away the hype and present considered analysis of these expensive devices so that folks can make informed purchasing decisions. All drones have flaws and it's better to know about them from the outset than discover it after purchase, right? So all things considered, this firmware update is a great result for what was already a great little drone, but it does not address the other shortcomings I talked about in that video and some other interesting issues that have come to light now that it's been out a few weeks. The 10-bit mode means that you now get 1,024 colors per channel rather than 256 per channel in 8-bit. It does not affect the dynamic range, i.e. that difference between the brightest sensor reading and the darkest sensor reading. But the pseudo HDR dual ISO mode was designed to tackle some of that anyway, so it's still a good result. The 10-bit mode only works in the D-Cine-like profile, so if you never grade your videos and shoot in normal mode, it will stay in 8-bit anyway. I'm all in favor of grading your video because I think it enables you to put your own spin and flavor on the footage. And if it encourages more people to do so, then that's a great thing. There are suggestions that the 10-bit d light mode has a much lower bit rate than the old firmware, which would of course impact the quality of the footage, but I haven't seen a definitive report on this. Hopefully, it's gonna stay nice and high. I still have no idea why DJI didn't release the drone with 10-bit firmware. It's a bit like rolling out a new four-cylinder car and then announcing, shortly after all the motoring journalists have criticized it for only having four cylinders, that, haha, joke's on you, it's actually got six cylinders and it's had them all along. We just hit two of them. It's bonkers. But anyway, it's good news. And I know that a lot of folks who'd previously decided to skip the Mini due to that lack of 10-bit are thinking again. I've seen a couple of excellent videos from experts that I trust, and I suggest everyone that's interested in the Mini 3 goes and watches them. The first is Philip Bloom's original Mini 3 review and its subsequent 10-bit update. And the second is Stuart and Alina's video on the Mini 3's shortcomings. I'll link them all up there and also down in the video description below. In my video, I suggested that if the 250 gram weight wasn't a concern to you, then the Air 2S would probably be a better choice. And guess what? That hasn't changed, it still is. In the comments section on Philip Bloom's Mini 3 update video, someone asked him about this and he echoed my point saying the following, the Air 2S has a much better image a much better sensor and very much better lens, shoots high resolution, has better sensors all round, and is much better in the wind. It also has 10-bit D-Log, actual proper HDR with 10-bit HLG. I would say it has a fair few advantages. Since my little analysis video came out, I've also been hearing about some other issues with the Mini 3 that I wanted you all to know about. Firstly, some people are having problems with the range on the drone. I've seen tests showing it going out to eight kilometers and also people struggling to reach 500 meters. This shows something of a lack of consistency that might catch you out if you choose to fly the drone to longer ranges. Now, as I said in my original video, most people can't legally fly beyond visual line of sight anyway, 
So it's a bit like arguing over the top speed of your car when the maximum you can legally drive on the road is half that number. But from what I've seen, you're probably good to about two and a half to three kilometers away in a rural environment. But when it comes to flying in an urban setting, I've seen tests where the Mini 3 can't make it past 400 meters. Other reviewers have reported an issue with overheating when the drone is stationary and on the ground. I didn't mention this in my original video because I don't think it's important. Drones are designed to be flown after all, not sit on a desk. The drone also seems to go into something of a panic mode when it's under heavy load. It throws up a battery low warning on the screen, even though the battery might be fully charged. In these situations, it also cancels any automated modes that might have been running at the time, such as a panorama or a hyperlapse. The other change I've read about is that the maximum shutter speed has been reduced to two seconds, which is the same as the Spark. This isn't a huge issue unless you're doing long exposures or perhaps time lapses, but it's still worth knowing about. So to summarize the pros and cons of the Mini 3 Pro right now in May 2022, I'd say the following. If you want the Mini 3 for legal or regulatory reasons, because it's sub 250 grams, then it's still a great and excellent choice. It has flaws, of course, such as issues in strong wind, transmission dramas in urban areas, no full D-log mode, no side sensors, a fixed aperture lens, and overly aggressive noise reduction issues at some frame rates and ISOs, but no drone is perfect. However, if you're buying the Mini 3 because it's at the cheaper end of the DJI range and don't care about its weight, then you really should consider the Air 2S because it's not that much more expensive and is considerably more capable. All right, guys, that's it for this video. One of many updates on the Mini 3 you'll probably see here on YouTube in light of the drone's most recent firmware update. Personally speaking, I'm still more than happy with my Mavic 2 Pro and can see no compelling reason to upgrade it, but who knows what DJI and the other manufacturers have got sitting on their test benches right now. Remember to hit the old like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to see more bullshit-free reviews and analysis from me. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.